How the Whale Got His Throat by Rudyard Kipling In the sea, once upon a time, oh my best beloved, there was a whale and he ate fishes. He ate the starfish and the garfish and the crab and the dab and the place and the dice and the skate and his mate uh, and the mackerel and the pickerel and the really, truly, twirly-whirly eel. All the fishes he could find in the sea he ate with his mouth. So, like that. Till, at last, there was only one small fish left in the sea. And he was a small, stoot fish. Ah. And he swam a little behind the whale's right ear, so as to be out of harm's way. Then the whale stood up on his tail, and he said, I'm hungry. And the small stoot fish said in a small stoot voice, Noble and generous cetacean, have you ever tasted man? Hmm, no, said the whale. What's it like? Oh, nice, said the small stoot fish. Nice, but nubbly. Hmm. <clears throat> Then fetch me some, said the whale, and he made the sea froth up with his tail. One at a time is enough, said the stoot fish. If you swim to latitude 50 north, longitude 40 west, that is magic, you will find sitting on a raft in the middle of the sea with nothing but a pair of blue canvas breeches, a pair of suspenders, you must not forget the suspenders, best beloved, and a jackknife, one shipwrecked mariner who, it is only fair to tell you, is a man of infinite resource and sagacity. So the whale swam and swam to latitude 50 north, longitude 40 west, as fast as he could swim, and on a raft, in the middle of the sea, with nothing to wear except a pair of blue canvas bridges, a pair of suspenders, you mustn't forget the suspenders, and a jackknife. He found one single, solitary, shipwrecked mariner trailing his toes in the water. He had his mummy's leave to paddle or else he would never have done it because he was a man of infinite resource and sagacity. Then the whale opened his mouth and back and back and back until it nearly touched his tail and he swallowed the mariner. <clears throat> and the raft he was sitting on and his blue canvas breeches and the suspenders which you must not forget and the jackknife, he swallowed them all down into his warm, dark, inside cupboards. And then he smacked his lips, just like so, and turned round three times on his tail. But as soon as the mariner, who was a man of infinite resource and sagacity, found himself truly inside the whale's warm, dark inside cupboards, he stumped 
and he jumped and he thumped and he bumped and he pranced and he danced and he banged and he clanged and he hit and he bit, he leapt and he crept and he prowled and he howled and he hopped and he dropped and he cried and he sighed and he crawled and he bawled and he stepped and he leapt and he danced hornpipes where he shouldn't and the whale felt most unhappy indeed. Have you forgotten about the suspenders? So he said to the stoot fish, this man is very nubbly and besides he's making me hiccup. What should I do? Well, tell him to come out, said the stoot fish. So the whale called down his own throat to the shipwrecked mariner. Come out and behave yourself. I've got the hiccups. Nay, nay, said the mariner. Not so, but far otherwise. Take me to my natal shore and the white cliffs of Aldium and I'll think about it. And he began to dance more than ever. Hmm. You better take him home, said the stoot fish to the whale. I ought to have warned you that he is a man of infinite resource and sagacity. So the whale swam and swam and swam with both flippers and his tail as hard as he could for the hiccups. And at last he saw the mariner's natal shore and the white cliffs of Albion. And he rushed halfway up the beach and opened his mouth wide and wide and wide and said, Joe Cheer for Winchester Ash a lot, no two shut keen and all stations on the Fitchburg Road. And just as he said, Fitch, the mariner walked out of his mouth. But while the whale had been swimming, the mariner, who was indeed a person of infinite resource and sagacity, had taken his jackknife up and cut up the raft into a little square grating, all running crisscross, and he tied it firm with his suspenders. <laughs> now you know why you were not supposed to forget the suspenders. <laughs> and he dragged that grating good and tight into the whale's throat. And there, <coughs> it stuck. Then he recited the following sloka, which, as you've not heard it, I will now proceed to relate. By means of a grating, I have stopped your eating. For the mariner was also a Hibernian. Mm. And he stepped out on the shingle and went home to his mother, who'd given him leave to trail his toes in the water. And he married and lived happily ever afterwards. So did the whale. But from that day on, the grating in his throat, which he could neither cough up nor swallow down, prevented him eating anything except tiny, tiny, tiny small fish. And that is the reason why whales nowadays never eat men or boys or little girls. The small stoot fish went and hid himself in the mud under the door sills of the equator. He was afraid that the whale might be angry with him. The sailor took the jackknife home. He was wearing the blue canvas breeches when he walked out onto the shingle. The suspenders were left behind, you see, to tie the grating with. And that is the end of that tale.